Today I'm installing some Harvard Scraped Oak Harmonics Laminate Flooring. This flooring is from Costco. Um, I've installed a lot of hardwood flooring and laminate flooring and I have not come across any flooring where this lip is that um, dominant here. It is just, it's up there about an inch, inch and a half. And it's only on um, my ending board. Sometimes it can be on the starting board. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to correct this board from being up that high. So my son and I are installing some of the Harbor Scraped Oak um, Harmonics laminate flooring. And we're running into an issue with the flooring to where it wants to float up about an inch and a half or so. So I'm going to start on this end. What I'm doing here is I'm going to put my toes on the edge of the flooring. You see that the flooring is bending a little bit there. I'm putting some pressure on it and I'm going to walk down and I'm going to tap it all the way through the whole line. And you'll see as I'm doing this that it will be going down. So when you get up to the wall, um, to where you don't have a lot of space to hit from the outside, uh, you will need a tool like this in order to get a nice, clean, tight seam. It has felt on the inside so it's not hitting the wood directly, but you set it here. You take your hammer, you'll put a hand on here so it doesn't kick up, and then you just hit this lip here. The other part you could use is this tool here. You can set it on the lip here of your wood, doesn't matter which direction, and use this to tap the wood all the way in. Uh, the benefit of using this over the block of wood, if you're not familiar with it, is that the block of wood could damage your lip here if you're not careful. This here only puts the pressure on the solid board on top of the laminate flooring, so it will keep it from actually damaging this little lip groove that you need here. So all in all, I would highly recommend this flooring. It is absolutely beautiful and it seems very durable. Uh, none of the I, in, I installed the refrigerator and the stove and the dishwasher and these moved these cabinets and couches all by myself and it did not damage the floor at all. Didn't leave any scuff marks or scratches. So I would highly recommend the flooring. Um, haven't spilt any water or anything on it, but it is supposed to hold water for 24 hours. So definitely recommend it. Just make sure that when installing it, you have a lot of patience if, it's, if you run into the same issue that many people have been running into. And I understand that not everybody's way is the right way. Um, there are different methods to everybody's madness here. But this is what I found to be helpful, so I thought I would share. And uh, I hope it's helpful to you guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. And I hope that your flooring turns out as well as mine did. So now that I have completed the flooring in the house, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through and show you all of it. So this was the bedroom I started in when I was showing you how to uh, keep them from folding up. You can see the transition piece there from the tile to the wood. Turned out very nicely. Just do a quick walkthrough. Excuse any messes you see. I did do it seamlessly through the closet. So it's nice and clean all the way to all the edges. Then I came out here through the living room. And then it's all the way to the door here. And went across the house here. You can see those are the only two transition points 
for carpet to the house. Then we have the dining area there. So from that area, we have our dining area here. And I did install molding here to match at the front and back doors. You can see through the kitchen. Now, when you're doing appliances, I did go under all of the appliances, so I did have to remove everything. I wanted it to be nice and clean, and I trimmed behind everything. And then we'll go back here to the laundry room. So, it did work um, really well. This flooring was the first flooring that I've ever had where it has that issue of staying up as much as it did. So working backward, once I hit this wall right here, because um, the bedroom is over there is where I started. Once I hit this wall and had to work backward all the way through into the laundry room, it was a bit of a pain. Um, I would have hoped that the flooring would be easier to install than it was. Um, I have installed a lot of this flooring, but it was, you know, I couldn't be happier. We've had it installed for uh, more than a couple weeks now, and it's beautiful. And it seems nice and durable, haven't had any issues, but it's it looks clean. Only downfall to it was uh, after installing the floor, our couches didn't match. Neither did our coffee table and entertainment stand, so I went and bought new furniture to match. So, um, But it is beautiful. I do highly recommend the flooring. All right, so I will explain the tools to you quickly and briefly. Uh, that way I'm not boring you. So let's start off with the squares. Um, I have three different uh, squares here. I have a large T-square that is a four-foot T-square. I have my small speed square. And then this square here. Um, the small ones are nice for just making quick lines across here. And then the large four-foot is nice for being able to make long cuts on here or just to line them out. Uh, next thing you'll need is a razor blade is very useful. You'll need a pencil. And then I keep uh, two tape measures, one out here and one inside the house uh, to measure and not be running around for them. The other thing that is very, very useful if you are doing any kind of like odd angle cuts, let's see, like a 73 degree cut is one of these digital angle finders. So this here, if you've never used one and you have a wall that is just, you don't have 90 degree angles or anything like that. These here save you so much time and definitely make it to where you're not cutting 10 different times to get your angle correct. Next, you'll need a drill. If you have any coaxial cable or foam lines coming through your floor, you will need this in order to drill out the holes uh, to bring your cables up through. I used a 3H drill bit to do so. Um, then I have two different hammers here. I have a small one and then I have a rubber mallet. Typically you would use a, it's like a plastic covered hammer to do this work. I just use this metal one and then I'll use my rubber mallet when need be. Um, these two tools right here are crucial. Uh, these here will keep you from damaging these grooves here. You can see here that there is a small lip on that male edge of the board. If you break this or it comes off into a piece, the boards will not sit properly. So this tool here actually sits on the board. You can see there's a little groove there. It's very small. But that there will cover the depth of this here. Or you could switch it and get larger coverage using that part. Um, but that goes on the edge of the board. And you would use this to tap your board in. So you get your hammer, you have this tool, and you would tap it along here. You can see here, by using a metal hammer, it sort of beat up this tool. But uh, it, it did the job for me. Next, you have this here. This is a pull bar. Uh, this goes, when you get 
when you start to get close to the wall, this goes on the outside edge closest to the wall. You know, this won't fit or you wouldn't have swinging room because there's a wall right here. This tool right here allows you to get, you would put this piece here over your edge and then you take your hammer and you hit it this way. That would suck the board up into the next board. Same thing for the edge. If you have a wall on the side, um, you'll need this for finishing pieces. No matter what, this is what you would need to get a nice clean seam on the edge of a wall. And then same thing, you could tap this. Now you can hit this hard enough without damaging the boards and you can slide 15, 20 feet of board across the room if you have a gap in the middle. This would close the gap, but you have to be careful not to let this pop up because you could break the board. Um, let's see, next you would use your jigsaw. You can use a table saw, um, but I or a chop saw. I use the jigsaw because a lot of my cuts are going in and out. So the jigsaw sort of is good for all of them. Cut them straight across, cut them in and out. And then this tool here. This is called a Dremel Multimax tool. So this here is great for notching these out as well. So you would, I just use wood or drywall blades on these and it, it they last a fair amount of time. But this here, you can notch out things pretty simple without having to recut everything or do a bunch of additional work. So there are the tools that I used. Um, these tools uh, help me get the job done quickly and if you don't have them, you could manage without some of the tools. Uh, these two here and a good hammer and a decent handsaw of some sort will get the job done. So hopefully this helped and I will go ahead and show you the work that I've done. One thing that I forgot to mention was this tool also works great for trimming out underneath any of your door jams. So what you would do with this tool is you set up like a scrap piece of your flooring here to get the correct height and you take your tool, this is what I did, is I just cut through like this. And it is so much faster than using any kind of handsaw trying to get that cut correctly.